Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today is another amazing episode of Tutorial Tuesday and today we're going to be taking a dive into V-Ray for Unreal, how you can use the brand new V-Ray that has been created for Unreal and this is a requested tutorial for Tutorial Tuesday by an amazing subscriber known as May. And what we're going to talk about today include how you can load the V-Ray plugin for Unreal, how you can create materials, how you can use these materials, how you can also create materials for Unreal and also render this directly here. What are the core features and how you can play with the settings so that you can get very good rendering out of it. And also how you can play with the other assets that comes with V-Ray for Unreal. Within this period, I'm going to cover a couple of things a bit extended and a bit close to what you guys already know about. And so if you want to learn something amazing today, strap in and let's get started. All right, so let's get started. So directly here, what you're seeing on the screen is Unreal Engine at its very basic state. OK, so what we've done here is just simply start up a new project with something very, very simple. And if you've downloaded or installed this plugin, how you get this plugin to work is very, very simple. So you go over to edit and go over to this part called plugin and you can turn this and make it enabled. For me, I'm just going to let this one be because I don't get to use it this one so i'm just doing that and close this and once you get that active you may need to restart your you know your viewport or the total the engine so that you can get this to start working for you so for you to start creating or let's say you want v-ray to start working for you what i need to do now or what i have to do is i'm going to create a, a new level okay i'm going to go over to file and create a brand new level it would be cool to do this, but then I think I should just simply use the other one. OK, so I'm going to create an empty level. So just in case you want to build things from scratch, you can know how to build this. And now the big differences between the two levels which I just created is the previous one. You get to find a couple of things here, but this one has nothing. So we're going to start from the beginning all the way up. And for this, I would need to also create a brand new folder and just simply call this material. So this is going to be where uh, our material and our texture that we'll be creating for this particular series is going to offer this tutorial would be. So next thing which I need to do, bring out a very simple plane and let's go ahead and scale this plane. And when we start talking about scaling, it brings me to transform. So how do you play with transforms directly here in Unreal? So if you press your spacebar, you can toggle between the transforms or you can use this or you can still use the very... Uh, default way of switching transforms which is w e and r so i'm just having this selected and i'm going to scale this all the way up and now a couple of people might be saying but this is not how you get to scale brushes all right so there are two types of geometries you find in unreal the very basic one which is just the basic brush like this and then you now have another one which are called brushes all right so these are brushes these other ones are basic geometries and these are you know brushes that you can use now the differences between this brush just for uh the guys that might be wondering all right so the differences between these brushes is you can actually use this to create crazy things so let's say i have this brush as it is and it is set to additive which means it adds to the scene i can go ahead and change this to sub sub subtract and i can use this to start building a very nice level on and you know crazy things like that okay so enough of that let's just get back to what we were doing and also another thing you need to note is if you create brushes like that you can also play with them and you know make models out of them so for transform that is how you get to transform things next thing you need to know is how you navigate around your viewport navigating in unreal is very simple very basic okay very maya like so hold down alternate with the left mouse button and you can rotate hold down the alt key with the right mouse button and you can zoom in and zoom out but for the panning you just need to hold down the middle mouse and then you can pan all right so with this way you can move around your scene with this out of the way next thing i need to do is go back to uh, the basic and simply drag in a sphere i think a sphere would be nice what else do i think would be nice uh, a cube a cube also looks cool. So we are going to create two materials so that you guys can see how this works. Okay, so I'm going to simply come over here and create a V-Ray material, a very basic V-Ray material. And I'm also going to directly right click here and also create a very simple 
Unreal material. Now, why am I creating two materials? The guys at Chaos already confirmed that you can render Unreal materials using the V-Ray engine, and we're going to simply see how that works, okay? And also, another reason why I'm creating this is so that you guys can see the differences between these two materials so you can know which one best suits you. I'm more of a node guy, all right? So, but then if you're into V-Ray, you know you actually work with V-Ray mostly like this, okay? So if you want to change the color, or let's say you have a V-Ray material created, and you want to change or you want to make brand new color or brand new stuff, you can come through and have this turned on so this makes it active and you can change the color all right so let's change the color to something like that and simply hit ok hit save make sure that's saved and you can find that here so now we can drop this directly on this ball as it is we don't really see a lot of depth because we don't have light in our scene so what we can do is we can simply throw in let's go over to v-ray and use the v-ray light we can simply throw, throw in a doom light but a doom light is more like an ambient light so it just washes everything all right so what i need to do we can bring in a sun and sky a sun and sky is good but i actually don't want to use this so let's go ahead and bring in something else. Let's bring in the very, very, uh, what's it called? The very, very known rectangular light, which is known as area light in a whole lot of apps. Okay. So I'm, I can come over to this particular section that we have here, which is for the details and increase the length and the width and, you know, all these things that you want to do. And one thing to note is this length and width do not affect this okay so this is totally different while this is totally different all right so it's something you need to you know keep in mind whenever you're working with tools like this so with this now i will just go ahead and rotate this just so that we can have some sort of uh movement of shadows in our scene okay oh and we can see that this is very visible so during render time it's very obvious that we'll be able to see this but we'll talk about that later. All right. So now I have this and I think we have some depth to this. It makes sense. Let's go ahead and move on. Let's go to Unreal and see how we can work with the material. So if you're new to Unreal materials, you may have found out that you need to actually plug a node to it. And there are certain things that you can use to actually drive this. One of them is known as constant. So you can come over here and bring a constant vector. So I'm going to bring a constant vector of three. We simply uh specifies r g and b and we can come through double click and change to a certain color so i'm going to use this color and plug it directly here all right so if i plug this here hit on the word apply and simply save this let's save this i can also come uh, i can also come through minimize this click and drag this directly onto this model and so with this now you can go ahead and start playing with things to see how you can shape them together and get them to work for you and also just in case maybe just in case you don't know or maybe you know and you're like all right so why didn't he use this there is also another note that you can use and i think it's vector let's get that straight so i think it's the vector parameter so i think with the vector parameter as well you'll be able to get out uh, an rgb and also get out an alpha all right so with this now you can still use this all right so you can still use this to control uh an object so you can use this by default to control an object how you want it so let's just simply move this to this portion and simply hit on the okay and let's go ahead and save and apply that stuff and see what we have so with this yes you can use either of these to actually throw in colors into your scene and yeah you can find that color has updated there so this is very very simple to work with let's try a quick render and see how that looks and how you get to do the render of course is just hit this button and allow V-Ray to do its thing. Doesn't look bad at all. Why we have those facets there? I think maybe because we're rendering in uh, real time. And I also think it's the render engine we'll, or the, the GI type we're using because if you stop this and you go over to the setting, you will be able to set the type of GI that you wanna use, okay? So if you come over to uh, the render setting, 
I think within the global Ill illumination, you can choose the GI engine that you want to use. So you can select either you want the light cache or you want the brute force. So depending on what you want to do, you can go ahead and change that. So now we've talked about this. We have talked about how you can attach materials. So for materials, I would need to simply bring in a material or texture so that we can talk about how you can attach texture. So for textures, uh, let's just simply grab one. So I have this particular texture that I have here. It's an oak wood. I would simply drag that texture and drag it directly here and just keep it directly here. So by default, when you're working in an app like this, okay, if you're working in Unreal, you can simply right click here and create material from this particular texture and you have a material that has this texture okay but if you you let's say you want to actually create something else if you're working with unreal there is still other ways you can do this so let's do this one after the other like so we'll go back and talk about v-ray and do this for unreal so for v-ray you need to make sure that you have this turned on this particular feature that says use the fuse texture you need to have that turned on you need to have this other one turned on as well. So with these two turned on, all right, so I'm going to also click here and now select this and select the texture that I want to use, okay? Now I can hit the word save and once I minimize this, you see this is here automatically. So I'm just going to go back. So I, I just have this there because I want to show you guys how you can do that for Unreal. So we have the Unreal material here. So how you get this to work for Unreal. So just in case you don't know how you get this to work is double click directly here. Already we've talked about how you can get this to, you know, you, how you can get these two nodes. So for Unreal, how you get this to work is you need something called a texture sampler. So you can right click from here and type in the word texture. You can, or you can find it from this part. So I'm just going to type the word texture. Uh, so I can get the texture sample here. So I can drive this texture RGB value here. All right. So, but before I start doing that, I think it's best I load up the texture. So I'll go over to the section called texture, click here and select this particular texture that we've brought in. So I'm just clicking that, make sure I have the texture happening here. Then I can go through and plug this there. All right. If you want to control how this texture work, there is also a coordinate that you can make use of. So I can just simply type the word texture coordinate, I think and you can go ahead and plug in this texture coordinate so you can use it to control how much tiling you want how much mirroring whatever you want to do with this you can just simply plug it over to the uvs and get these things to start working for you so that is how you get the texture working and if you simply minimize this all right uh, let's go ahead and save that so we didn't save this okay so let's save this and actually minimize that once it's done saving Let's give it a while. Yeah. And you can now see that we have that happening there. If you want to drive your emission, right? Or let's say you want to mix things together. There is also something called LERP. So you can use the LERP, right? You can use it to actually drive things together and work with them. If I simply bring it out from here, you can use it to drive things. So if you if you've watched the video where we talked about introduction to hypershade, introduction to subsurface, introduction to so many other things, they are in the channel. Link is going to be in the description for you guys. Yes, you're going to get the entire idea of how you can actually go through and mix things together, you know, and get them to work for you. So with, in that way, you can get these crazy things to work. So now that we've talked about how you can get your materials and also how you can directly make them work here, we haven't talked about the settings. So settings is something that you really need to know how you can fix. So for the settings here, you if you want to simply render to the V-Ray frame buffer, you need to turn this off. All right. So all of our rendering happens on our viewport, but if you want to get it to render, on the V-Ray frame buffer, you need to turn this off. Other things that we can do is we can choose a render camera from here. So if you have multiple render cameras, which simply means that you can grab one from here and drop it directly here, okay? And once you have something like this happening in your scene, you can go through, rotate, and you can see a small window here that shows you what the camera is actually looking at at any given point in time. And that also brings me to lights. So for the lights, you can still use um, on real lights to actually light your scene 
and yeah it works as a charm whenever you work with something like that so back to the settings so for the settings as well you can select the engine you want you can choose the graphic card if you want to use graphic card for the denoiser you can choose a very simple denoiser and you can choose the noise limit you can also choose the sampling size you can you also play with the cameras as much as you want for the lights you can also play with the shadows and also for the materials you can have a fallback material just in case the material doesn't load up all right so just in case the material doesn't load up you can put a fallback material that the renderer falls back to before the rendering starts here is where you control the quick quality of what you want so depending on what you want you can play with the quality settings from here or you can just simply go in and type in the settings that you want to work with here deals with the resolution aspect ratio all that stuff all right you guys know what i'm talking about go ahead and find them out for yourself so with this here let's simply uh make sure that we want to render to the frame buffer just to see how that works all right so that is turned off and then i'm going to simply press on this particular button so with this button pressed on it's going to go through and start rendering this and if we want to see what the rendering looks like what we can do is we can simply click here and open the v-ray frame buffer and let me just simply drag that right inside here and to every change or everything that gets to happen on the viewport you're going to see that happening directly here and now let's talk about how we can lose this so for you to simply lose that what you can do is you can have this object selected go all the way down here and turn invisibility on so with that turned on and let's say we stop this let's rotate this a little bit and let's just zoom around to a point like this actually let's just stay here so that you guys can see that there is no cheating okay and if i stop this and render this one more time let me also come back and open up the frame buffer so you guys can see let me drag it from this other screen to a screen like this okay yeah so if i drag it from that particular screen over to a screen like this you can see that uh, the rendering actually is going to start all right so this is how you can get things to work and i guess this is the basics of how you can work with the v-ray that is for unreal i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section Who, would you want me to make more videos about v-ray would you want me to make more videos about unreal talk to me about these things in the comment section and if you like this video you know what to do go ahead and hit the like button and also turn on notification and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notification because we release new content every day and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.